Hey everybody, Josh back with another video. Uh, <clears throat> this is a new acquisition for me. This is a Ludlum 14C Geiger counter rate meter. Um, it's actually a pretty nice unit. Uh, sorry if I sound a little bit off. I'm um, dealing with some like mild illness, so that'll be a thing. But anyway, yeah, this is a Ludlum 14 or <laughs> Ludlum 14C Geiger counter with a 447 um, alpha beta gamma probe and this is actually a pretty nice unit this is a pretty good score um, this one also has its own uh, cesium-137 check source in here this is actually kind of like a little shield door it'll probably shield a chunk of the betas and if not all of them but anyway yeah, let's kind of like review the features of this guy. This is a pretty interesting unit because it, this one comes with this probe. This is an alpha beta gamma probe. Pretty nice. It's in a pickle style versus like the pancake style probes I've showed before. Um, and it also features a higher range internal tube. So if you'll notice the... Uh, I'm going to try and get this so you can see it without the wire in the way. But as you can see here... The dial actually has a range from 0.1 to uh, 10,000 counts per minute ratio or range. And the 10,000 counts per minute is actually measured by a small internal Geiger tube that I'll show you later in the video. But anyway, um, this is ooh, kind of a standard deal on terms of Ludlums. You've got your audio on and off. Oops. You've got a fast and slow integration. You've got a reset switch and a battery check. This moment, the meter's in the off position, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it to 0.1, which is the lowest range. And as you can hear, it's clicking. Um, I also have a counts per minute face here. So you can actually see in fast mode, it's adding counts rather quickly. And... Yeah, anyway, it's, that's pretty simple so far. Um, we'll do the battery check here real quick. Hit the battery button. And we got a full battery. But anyway, I will go ahead and just like use our check source to check here. And I will focus on the meter. So if I hold it sideways, I'm picking up definitely some of the gammas at the very least, going through the shielding and into the tube. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop the range up to 100 for the check source when it's open. But anyway, yeah, so this this setup here will, or the way that this probe is held here will have uh, mostly gamma activity. Maybe a couple of betas make it through, but you never know. Uh, and then I'll just do the end window, which should allow alpha, beta, and gamma, but there are probably few alphas being emitted here, if any, from the cesium-137. And... You can see that the meter is reading probably 80,000 counts a minute, or sorry, 8,000 counts a minute. So the check source definitely works, and that's a uh, cesium-137, as you can see written there. Anyway, it's a pretty nice meter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, prep one of my uranium samples that's just a little bit higher in activity. So I can show you guys the high range tube in action, and then I will actually show you the high range tube itself on the inside of the counter. So I'm going to pause real quick and then be back. Okay, we're back. And with my Vanden Brandeidor sample, and it's handy dandy lead pig, and then in a secondary aluminum beta jar. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And one of the first things I want to do is just because it's uranium. Ooh, got to replace that. But anyway, one of the first things I want to do because this is a uranium sample is I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to take account with the alpha window open because it's uranium-238 primarily. So we're going to get like a really high like alpha well, mostly beta and gamma but we'll also definitely get some alphas because it's uranium 238 so get that up to the max scale at times 100 
There we are. Ah, sorry guys. Doing my best one-handed. Okay. Actually not seeing much on X100. Let's flip it up to 10, or flip it down to 10. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's so about 10,000 counts a minute through the end window, so that's not bad. But now I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on this guy, and I'm going to hold it sideways against where the uh, times one tenth or yeah times 1,000 range is. Get the lead pig out of the way. Take this and. Yeah, okay, we're on times 1,000. So it's not getting a whole lot. It's getting some, but that's actually a really high range tube as well, so I'm not surprised. But anyway, as you can see, something that made the uh, Alpha Beta Gamma Probe sing a little bit is uh, not as effective on this other tube, and I'll show you why. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power it off. And then I'm going to open the can, and I'll show you guys. There we go. There we go. So here we have the internal Geiger Mueller tube. That's responsible for the high range. And kind of the way this works, sorry guys. Kind of the way this works is that because the tube's geometry is so small, um, particles are less likely to pass through it. So that's how it can function as a better high range tube. Um, so it's kind of an interesting trick of physics that you can take a smaller tube and read greater amounts of radiation in a given field with it. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of cool. And this is the inside of an older Ludlum 14C. But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and put that back together. And click our lip, click the can closed. And hold this down while we do the same thing to the other side. fully reassembled but anyway yeah it's a nice little unit um has all the same controls that you know most of your handheld or well like brick shaped geiger counters will have coming from ludlum but yeah it's a pretty nice little unit takes two d cells um this one's definitely an older one but yeah it works great oh actually let me grab an alpha emitter and we can read that i'm gonna pause okay here we are back with a with an americium 241 sample. This is just a little button sample um, with an open window. And let's see if I can get this in a good place for you all to see it. In the middle of this button is a small like foil piece that's been coated with americium 241, which is an alpha emitter. Uh, this is the same stuff they use in smoke alarms. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Geiger counter again, and I'll set it on times one, and this guy will mostly emit alphas, so we'll see how many we can pick up with the end window probe, and I'll also show you how the readings change with distance. So, and you can definitely, you'll definitely be able to hear it with the, uh, with the Geiger counter speaker. So, but anyway, so just listen as it get closer, and you'll see how close I have to get before it really reads hard. So the activity's definitely increased this far away. Alpha particles don't have much range in air. It's only usually a couple or a few centimeters, depending on the sample. Um, but as I get closer, it'll get much louder because the alphas will start more readily penetrating. Uh, it's also worth noting that this will emit some gammas as well. So there's a little bit of extra energy left over for some, from some of the alpha decays, and that's usually expressed as gammas. But anyway, so and it'll really get loud as I get even closer. 
I'm not touching it yet. I'm going to try not to touch it. But on a times one scale, you can see that we've already buried the needle. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy. And we're just going to skip times 10 because that's actually going to be kind of crazy. And we'll go straight to 100, which is the last setting on this Geiger counter that will use my probe, my external probe. So here we go. Yeah, sorry. Get a better grip on that so I can hold it more accurately. Okay, I'm hovering right above the sample. So we are at nearly probably, what is this, times 100? So 80,000 counts per minute. And a large part of that's actually going to be the alpha particles coming off of the americium 241. So cool. Um, yeah, and that's actually kind of one of the cool features about this thing that allows it to work in a fire alarm is that uh, these alpha particles ionize the air between the actual, like, foil piece here and between the outer housing of, like, whatever's holding it. It creates a small electrical current, and as smoke and other particles drift into that chamber, they'll actually block this alpha radiation and create, like, a lower current between the plate and the sample. And when the fire alarm detects that that current has sufficiently shrunk, it goes off. So that's why there's actually radioactive material in these. That's how that works. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So a uh, pretty great little Geiger counter. Pretty standard for a Ludlum. And yeah, alpha, beta, and gamma sensitive because of the probe as well as like the high range gamma probe or high range internal gamma detector. All in all, pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, definitely like it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one, and I think I have another video to record with another recent acquisition that's actually pretty cool and interesting. Anyways, cheers guys, and talk to you later.